I'm going to do a lightning talk on the next Elixir version because if I don't talk about it, the first question tomorrow would be about the type system. <laughs> Even for my talk is not about the type system, so I'm going to preemptively deal with that. So the next Elixir version is going to be 1.17. It's going to be released around May, June. And very quickly, so some improvements, uh, mixed test, break, uh, mix test breakpoints. And what it's, that does is that it sets a breakpoint before running each test, so you can like step through the code line by line. Uh, another feature coming is repeating two failures. So sometimes like you have some test that is not always passing, and they're like, oh, I just want to run this over and over again. Sometimes we, you have a bash script that you copy around, right? And then like, you don't have to do that anymore. Mix is going to do that for you. Uh, we added the duration type to Elixir as well. So it happens that duration is quite complex. And that's why it took quite a while for us to provide this feature. Because so Elixir does not have an API for handling durations. And what is duration? Like, oh, this thing is going to take uh, one week and three days, or a month and a week, one year and two months, right? Uh, one year and three hours, right? Those are, we are expressing durations with that. And the issue is that one month, for example, we know that one month does not mean 30 days. We cannot assume just that, right? Some months are going to have 31, 20, 28, 29. So what does it mean, for example, if you do January uh, 31st plus a month. Is that the last day of February? Is that the first day of March, right? Or what does it mean adding one year in the Chinese calendar, right? Because it's a, if I remember correctly, a lunar cal calendar. It's a lunar solar calendar. So in order to be able to answer all, answer all these questions and provide a proper abstraction for it, uh, we have a great uh, Theodore, he sent a fantastic pull request that adds the duration data type and a shift operation to Elixir. Okay, so it's a new duration struct and now you can do, oh, I have a date and I want to shift it by one month. And note that we are explicitly calling it shift, we are not calling it add because this is not a arithmetic, uh, arithmetic operation, right? So if I say, oh, if I shift 21st January to by one month, and then you get February uh, 28, 28th February, for example. If you take one month back, then that goes back to January 28th, right? So there are all these complexities. So are like, look, we're, let's not pretend this is arithmetic, okay? This is a shift operation. Uh, we add shift to time, naive day time, day time, all the calendar types, and it supports multiple calendars and time zones as well, right? So it's the whole thing. And something else that we have been exploring for quite some time, and with Elixir 1.17, as you're going to see, it's finally getting its way into Elixir, right? So uh, I have announced, I believe, two years ago, exactly at Elixir Conf Europe, that we have a PhD scholarship to research and develop a gradual type system for Elixir. Uh, Guillaume, Bep, and I, we have been working on it. We have published a paper that goes in length into into our work, the paper has been published, and uh, and we announced uh, last year that we the type system, the effort overall, is moving from research into development. Okay, and at the beginning of this year, I've I've showed this example. So this is some Elixir code. Okay, that it says this is binary. This is a binary pattern, right? So we say, look, this binary. I want to get this apart uh, from the binary as an integer, and I want to get this part from the binary as a float. Both are trying to assign to the same variable x, and this cannot be possible, right? I cannot take something from the binary, the same variable, I cannot pattern match on that as an integer and as a float. So now the compiler is going to tell, hey, you know, it's compatible types, an integer cannot be a float, and it shows exactly where the error is coming from, right, and it points to that. So that's already in Elixir main branch, and what we are going to do for Elixir 1.17 is that we will perform inference and gradual type checking of binaries and maps, okay? So what we are going to do is that every time you have a binary like in that code, and every time you have, uh, you are pattern matching on a map or trying to access a map field, we are going to perform inference on that and we are going to do type checking on that. You're going to say, oh, you're trying to get a field that does not exist, or you're trying to put something into a binary that we know is a, 
is a string, for example, and you tell me it's an integer. So you are going to, the goal is like to find obvious mistakes in your code. There is no, there is no typing API, like you're not going to be typing your programs yet. We are running the type system on your code that exists today, and we are going to use patterns, we're going to use information for our code to find potential bugs and report on that, right? And the reason why we chose binaries and maps is because binaries is the simplest thing that we can type, like saying something is an integer or an atom, and maps is the most complex type that we'll have to implement from the point of view of the type system. So we are starting with the easiest one, the hardest one, and then if we can do those two, there's a lot more confidence that we're, we'll be able to do the things in the middle. Okay, so the roadmap is roughly, after we do this, after Alex 1.17 is out, there is a lot of work ahead of us, but what we need to do is that we need to support all data types, right? We need to deal with lists, tuples, references, speeds, anonymous functions, right? We need to make sure that the type system can deal with all the data types in the language, right? And then after you do that, we are going to look at all the patterns, all the guards in your code, and get as much information we can from that, again, to tell you when there are bugs in your code without you having to change a single line, right? Think about it, you know, as if dialyzer is now, is not the same thing, but just for a comparison, that dialyzer is now running all the time as you compile your code and telling things, and hopefully with good error messages, a good user experience, and so on, right? It's not dialyzer at all, that was just a comparison. And then after we do that, we can start like type checking, local and remote calls, you can start understand more and more and more of your code. And again, no visible changes to the language at this point. We want to battle test the type system. We want to make sure that it has good error messages, right? That it provides a good experience. And then if this works out, we will eventually start having discussions on how you as developer can actually start declaring types on your program. Okay, so a lot of work ahead, right? And that's where we are right now. 1.17 is starting to show uh, some of the, the results of our, all the research that we did. And finally, this is only possible uh, because it's a partnership between the CNRS and Remote. And the development is sponsored by Fresha, Starfish, and Dashbit. Uh, those companies, they're sponsoring the event as well, Fresh and Starfish, so check them out, go to their booth, talk, talk to them. And that's all I had for today, and see you tomorrow. <laughs>